Hi guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guy. Thanks very much for joining me today. As you can see here, I've got a review of the Stadler Luna watercolor pencils. Now, I I can remember uh, a few years ago uh, watching um, an artist uh, from India, and this artist used these pencils. Now, at the time, I didn't know what the brand was or anything like that. I just seen the the barrels and I'll I'll get into all of that in a second but they looked you know really different they um but the work that he was doing that this artist was doing was extraordinary and you know the the pencils looked really nice and I had been searching for them for a long time I found them about a year ago uh but it was just too difficult to get hold of them and then I seen them on AliExpress and I purchased the set of them. So, um, I don't know. I've done a little bit of research. Uh, I've, I've reached out to Stadler, but I haven't had anything back yet from them. Uh, but if you go onto the Stadler website, the, the kind of like the .com website and the UK version of the website, there's no mention of the Stadler Luna watercolor pencils at all now they've got lots of different other pencils that they um are doing and they're bringing out um new pencils as well like, like they've brought out a set of um colored graphite pencils a little bit like the the Durban graphite tint uh, i have those i'll be doing a review of those later on but um there's, there's no mention of these. Now, that could be down to a number of things. It could be down to the fact that maybe they're phasing these out and they're bringing in the other ones, like the, the, the Karat. Uh, the, the Karat are a little bit, um, like, kind of like student range, and I would put these in here as, the as like, a children-grade pencil. But having said that, we'll get into the quality and stuff like that of these pencils in a little bit. But anyway... Um, so, so I, I'm not sure whether Stadler had made these specifically for the Asian market or if they if it just worked out that they were more uh, widely available in like the likes of India and Pakistan and countries like that. I really don't know uh, and I and I can't get a definitive answer for you on that. Um, but anyway, let's get into the review and take a little look at the the, the actual pencils themselves. So, as you can see, they have a, a round barrel. The core is pretty average, um, 3.1 millimeters, with a 7.5 millimeter barrel. The end of the pencil is uncapped, so you get to see the core of the pencil. Um, now, along the the barrel of the pencil, it says. Uh, the, the company name Stadler and then there's a little moon icon and then it says Luna and then all of the pencils have this number 137 uh, printed on the barrel and then there is this little paintbrush icon on the very end as well just to indicate that they are water soluble now it, it was the barrels the the way the barrels are is what kind of like attracted me to them and as you can see here they're a little bit like uh, a stick of rock or as some other people have said like, like kids candles um and it's really difficult actually to work out whether it's the light part or the dark part of the the pattern on here that is the um the pigment identifier of the the core i think it's supposed to be the dark part but um if you take a look at say if we take a look at these greens, they are all, the, the barrels are all fairly identical. You know, there are very, very slight differences. But if you look at the cores, well, there's a significant difference. So in terms of identifying the um, the actual core, it, it is visually difficult to work out what you're going to um, select. Now, the... the the Stadler Lunar come in this cardboard box. They come in sets of 12, 24, 36, and 48. 48's the largest set. I'll have 
um, prices and links and what have you over on the Art Gear Guide, the written review of this. But um, uh, the, and to be fair, the prices are reasonable. Now, occasionally when I was having a look on certain Amazon stores and stuff like that, I was seeing wild, crazy prices for some sets of these. Now, that might be down to the fact that either Stadler are doing away with them or that they are only available in the likes of India or Pakistan. I'm not too sure, but the the links that I have provided over on the Art Gear Guide are the, the, the very cheap prices that they sh- kind of like mostly come in at. Um, so when you open the box, the, the pencils are in like two little trays, two little cardboard trays. You just pull them out. But what Stadler have done, and I don't know whether this was an afterthought or whether this was something that they had planned to do, but as you can see here, they have this sticker sheet, right? And the sticker sheet has little circles on here and it it indicates that you can take off one of the stickers and place it on the end of the pencil. So, like this one here, you could take it off and place it onto the, the, the end of the pencil, and that would give you, like, I suppose what they think is a representation of the pigment. But here's the problem. So, none of the numbers that are on these uh, dots correspond to the pencils in any way, shape, or form. So what you could do is you could eyeball the the colors. So like in the in in the instance of the greens, you would have to take a look and guess which one. But you can see there the five and the fifty-two are very similar, as is the thirty-eight. And so they, they it doesn't really help. To do anything. Now. I swatched the, the pencil side. You can see some images coming up here. Uh, on your screen. And you can see a, the, the, the dry version. And the wet version. Now we'll, we'll talk about the quality of the pencils. In just a second. But. Obviously. Because there's no way of identifying. So none of the pencils have numbers. You've got to use these stickers. As corresponding ways to you know once you do your swatch or you could put your stickers on first but I didn't want to touch the stickers for purposes of this review to show you how they come out but as you can see here my my swatch hasn't got any numbers on it or anything like that so when I had the pencils out and I was doing the artwork it was difficult to look at these this swatch and go right okay that's whatever pencil, that's the pencil I need, that's the colour I need, and try and cor- like marry it up to the pencil. And that's where the, the these dots come in. But again, it's it's pretty much a guesswork. So in the case of like, say this green, and for argument's sake, say that this pencil was the one that created that green. So I would just take either the 5 or the 52, put it on there, and then write 52 underneath it, and that's it. And I and I would just have to stick with it, whether that whether that number, whether that like dot is for this pencil. I've got no idea. There's there's, there's no way of knowing. So it's a little bit, I don't know. Like I say, I don't know whether this was an afterthought. I don't know whether the Luna pencils have been out there and somebody has said to them, "Listen, when we swatch these pencils, we can't. There's no way of us." corresponding these pencils because like I said that number that 137 number that's on the barrel is on all of them so that's it there's there's no distinguishing features on these pencils whatsoever other than obviously the core um so I, like I said I don't know whether it was an afterthought or whether this is something that they had planned out and that, you, that somebody in Stadler thought that this was a good idea uh, I really don't know but it is what it is. I, so I did some artwork with the, the Stadler uh, Luna watercolour pencils. And to be quite honest with you, I was really happy with the outcome of the, the, the artwork. And this is the thing about watercolour pencils, water-soluble pencils, as opposed to watercolours. Um, I think that 
because they're in a pencil form, they, they lend themselves to a certain level of accuracy. Whereas with, with like, say, tube watercolors or palm watercolors, you can create a certain, um, a certain level of chaos and beauty and, like, spon- spontaneity on your paper with, with those types of uh, watercolors. But with watercolor pencils, it's a little bit more difficult to get that kind of that look, that feel, that spontaneity, that that explosion of color on the on the paper, because a lot of that type of um, spontaneity and uh, color merging together, a lot of that is done on wet on wet, and that's a difficult thing to do with watercolor pencils. So watercolor pencils, in my opinion, are a much more accurate. Uh, medium whether you like that or not if that's a different thing but I just think that it's a it's a much more accurate medium and so therefore this drawing doesn't necessarily look like it was it's a watercolor painting but you know it is it's done with watercolor pencils and every nearly every aspect of this this drawing as you could see with the speed drawing was activated with water as watercolors should be now um the the paper that I I did this on was the uh, Hanna uh 300 pound 640 GSM watercolor paper, which I will be doing uh, an independent review of. Um, but this this watercolor paper was just gorgeous. Um, but nevertheless, I, I did it. I did this this drawing on that paper. Uh, but but I'll talk more about that in a separate review. Now inside the um, the set that you get, you do get a little paintbrush. But to be quite honest with you, this paintbrush is uh, pretty pathetic. It, I mean, I guess I know I, I know it's just a little cheap paintbrush, but I mean, it, you can see there that the hairs and all the rest of it, they're just all over the place. There's no, I mean, it gets terrible, even when it's wet. Even when it's wet, you can still see, you know, it's a mess. It's not going to give you nice brush strokes. I did try to use it, um, obviously, for the purpose of the review, but it's next to useless. So I've just got um, a little watercolor pad here. It's um, a Paul Rubin watercolor pad. And I'm just going to show you how these pencils uh, activate. Now, this is the different side of these pencils. So bear in mind they're kind of like aimed they're focused at kids but um as you could see with the swatch the, the 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 pigment strength both dry and activated was really surprising really nice strong vivid pigments um and so i'm just going to show you some of those colors on this paper here so i've just got um I've just got like the, the 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 usual red, green, blue, and yellow. Uh, I'll zoom in in a second. Now, whenever I'm doing uh, like a watercolor pencil test, I like to put a heavy application down of the pencil because obviously I'm going to get a nice um, pigment strength. But also as well, when you're working with watercolor pencils, uh, if they're cheap and they're not well produced or anything like that, if you if you lay down a hard application of the pencil, then you will, when you activate the, 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 the watercolor paint, you'll still have some of the pencil strokes underneath that once it's activated and you'll see them. And for some, some artists might like that, but th- that's not the way they're supposed to be. If they're well-made watercolor pencils, as soon as you activate with water, the, it should all turn into paint. There shouldn't be any marks underneath it, regardless of the the um, the pressure that you put down on the pencils. So I'm just putting down some green, blue, yellow here. You can see here uh, on the camera, and I'm only putting like a medium pressure. I'm not going super hard on it, but I'm going hard enough where um, I know that pigment is is on the paper. Um, it's ingrained in there. Put it like this. If this was an ordinary color pencil and I came back with an eraser to try and 
lift up some of that pigment. I would have a hard job doing that because of the, the medium to hard pressure that I've put down here. So there we can see um, these four colors. And I'm just going to use my, um, my own watercolor brushes here. These SS, sorry, SAA watercolor brushes. I really like them. Incidentally, um, I I admire a watercolor artist called uh, Jeff Kersey, uh, and he uses these um, these watercolor brushes. So I got a few of them quite a while ago, uh, and absolutely love them. Uh, if you want to know more about, or if you want to get yourself some, I'll have a link down below where you can go across and. Uh, pick some up for yourself but anyway so let's let's activate these pigments there you go so you can see there that all of that pigment is turned into paint and there are no marks whatsoever underneath that uh, and that's what that's what I found all the way through out the drawing I did. Um, these pigments are strong, vibrant, and um, no problem lifting off the paper. There's no marks underneath or anything like that. Every every piece of pigment that's on that page is turned into paint. Is activated, turned into paint. Um, which is really, really good. So, despite those other things that I've mentioned, you know, about the classification of the pencils in, in, in terms of uh, pigment identifiers, um, the, the, the stickers that they've uh, um, added into the set, the, the actual pencils, the quality of the pencils is really, really excellent for the price. For anybody that's into watercolor pencils or looking for a, a, a really nice set of watercolor pencils just to take out on the road with them or something like that and they're not looking to spend an awful lot of money the the Stadler Luna are a really nice little pencil to have in your kit now there's no light fast ratings or anything like that they are aimed at kids okay so there's no there's, no, there's none of that available. You can't purchase some open stock either. So you're not going to be able to do that. But the price of the sets are so are so low that it wouldn't really work out doing um, selling them open stock in any case. So what I'm going to show you about the, you know, the wet on wet technique that you would normally use with watercolors. Uh, which you, you can to a certain extent do with watercolor pencils, but it can mess up your pencils. So let me just show you. So I'm just putting a little bit of water down here, some clean water on this pad. And with your pencil, you can come in and because that water, is, that pad is now wet, you can see there that as soon as the pigment touches the water, it kind of like disperses out, it feathers out, and it, it, it creates these really nice, um, the, these really nice effects. But you gotta be careful because obviously you're dealing with uh, pencils here. So, but you can see there that you're kind of like getting a wet on wet technique and the pigment is really strong. It's difficult to control the pigment in this type of, uh, in this type of way but what you've got to be mindful of you're now wetting the core of the pencil as well so you need to make sure that the core of the pencil is dry before you put it into a sharpener and you try to sharpen it because it will make a mess of the sharpener and it'll all it'll do is it'll end up destroying that particular part of the core uh, that you're trying to sharpen and it'll just you, you'll just end up having to keep on sharpen and you'll lose a little bit of pigment and you know I know they're cheap pencils but you don't want to waste uh, art supplies regardless how cheap they are or anything like that you know um, 
So th th that's one technique that you can use with watercolor pencils. Um, I have a palette that I use as well. I, I didn't use it for this artwork, but um, I've showed it many, many times. And I think for anybody that has uh, watercolor pencils, the Caran Dash um, plastic palette for watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons or anything like that is a must have it just transforms the pencils creates uh, so many different levels and layers to the pencils and to the ability of the pencils uh, it just opens up so many opportunities and so many possibilities with watercolor pencils i personally think it's a must have for any watercolor artist or watercolor pencil artist should i say um, you can just see some images of it popping up on the screen here, but if you want, I'll have a link down below. You can go across and see my review of that particular uh, item, uh, and there will be a link there as well where you can go and get one yourself if you're interested. But as you can see here, um, the the pigment in these pencils is really nice for, for the cheap set of pencils that they are. You can see as well in my um, swatch of the pencils just how how bright and vibrant the um, the pigments are, and as I said, the artwork as well that I completed was I was really quite pleasantly surprised with the way that came out. Also, so all in all, there are a couple of issues that I had with these pencils. You know the the. The difficulty in identifying the pigment because of the way the barrels are, because of the, the, the patterns on the barrels. But having said that, at the same time, I like the way the barrels are. They, they're striking, they're different. Uh, they, they remind me of a stick of rock. That we, here in the UK, we've got a place called Blackpool. And I suppose Blackpool is the UK's version of uh, Las Vegas. But it's like a really run down place now. But when I was a kid, back in the 70s and 80s, my granny and granda used to take me across to Blackpool with them occasionally. Uh, and Blackpool back then was like, it was like Las Vegas. It was beautiful. Lights and shows and all the rest of it. And you used to get sticks of rock all the time and they were just like these pencils. So for me, there's personal memories when I use these. And when I used to see this other artist from India using them, that's what really drew me to them. Was the personal memories that I had. That I had this connection with the way these pencils were. I know it sounds daft and it's certainly not something that you should be buying art supplies based around. But I'm just letting you know the story. Um, also the stickers that they put in there as well. Not really, not really important given the way you know the pencils are. And uh, finally, the, the little paintbrush. I know a lot of watercolor sets add a paintbrush in there. But if you're going to add a paintbrush, at least add one that can be used. There are lots of different watercolor pencil sets out there that are cheap and expensive pencils, but they still supply a decent little um, brush that can be used for small work. This little brush that they've produced here is really quite terrible. Um, but those issues aside, the actual core with inside these pencils is tremendous for the price. Really, really nice, really strong, really um, when you're using them and stuff like that, dead easy to move about. I really, really enjoyed using them. Uh, and I, and like I said, I was quite pleasantly surprised with the artwork. Anyway, guys, that's my review of the Stadler Luna water soluble watercolor pencils, whatever you want to call them. Um, like I say, if you want to know about prices and links to the various different countries that you can purchase these from, uh, a, a lot of the links are to AliExpress uh, and they deliver to lots of different countries. So, and the and the prices are the cheapest that I could find uh, on AliExpress or Amazon or any of the other places as well that I looked around. So the, the links are the cheapest that I could find. But um, if you want to know about the prices, uh, by all means, go across to the Art Gear Guide, the written review, and you'll be able to see all the prices over there, as well as the different sets. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, they come in a set of 12, 24, 36, and 48. They also have, like, and, and they come in these cardboard boxes, but they also have a uh, 
36 set and a 48 set and they come in like a, a bandolier like a roll that you can put your pens pencils into and then just roll them up um so th that's just another option if you want to get them that way as as opposed to just in the cardboard box um, anyway guys if you've got any questions about these pencils if i've missed anything in this review please let me know uh down below please um ask any questions if you prefer to ask your questions privately by all means do just uh send me an email the art gear guide at gmail.com i'll have a link for that down below you can just click on the link and uh, email me directly and i will get back to you as fast as i as i can also if you're watching this video before the 1st of october 2021 uh, I'm doing a giveaway uh, of 144 Koh-i Polycolor Pencils, a brand new set of 144 gorgeous Koh-i Polycolor Pencils. If you want to get in with uh, the chance to win that set, uh, there will be a link down below to the video. Go across, listen to the video, listen to the terms and conditions, and uh, you can be in with a shout of winning that set of pencils, which the, the draw for will be on the 1st of October 2021. That's why I say if you're watching this video before then. If you're watching this video after that point, the giveaway is over. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for all your support, all your kind comments. And um, the all, everybody that has taken part in the giveaway, um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, all your support and all your wonderful comments and emails that I get from you guys. It is incredibly heartwarming. And also as well, uh, for everybody that has gone across and uh, followed my daughter on Instagram, um, I just can't tell you how, how happy that has made me. And more importantly, how happy it has made her. I got a, a phone call from her the other day just saying loads of people are so nice because they've sent their little personal messages and what have you. And she's been messaging people back and she was like you know dad these people are amazing i've i've got some wonderful messages from people and she has seen all all the different people following her and it has just really boosted her uh confidence uh, uh and really just made her day anyway thank you so much guys i look forward to seeing you all again in the next review thanks bye